Hello everyone to the next lecture of business analytics using MS Excel and in this lecture I will be talking about descriptive statistics and uh, these are the topics I would be covering arithmetic mean, geometric mean, median, quartile, percentile, mode, standard deviation, skewness. So these are these are fundamentally the topics which I will be covering which is more or less covering mm. the measures of central tendency and uh, measures of central dispersion along with skewness. So that's uh, that's the entire thing which I'll be covering up. So uh, let's let's begin with this thing and uh, the data again. Uh, once again, I'll be providing link in the description. The same data sheet will be available in uh, on that particular link itself. So this is the data which I have right now with me, and I'll be running arithmetic mean problem on it. I'll be using arithmetic mean by two different ways. I'll be using a formula to calculate arithmetic mean, and uh, I'll be using pivot table simple pivot table to calculate arithmetic mean of two things and i hope you have know the basics of arithmetic mean which is absolutely uh, a central value so it represents the central value of uh, any data set and uh, for understanding what do you mean by arithmetic mean you can see my playlist of arithmetic mean and understand the basics of it so uh, right now i have got this data set in which i have a day of the week that means Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and so on. So weekday, second is for Tuesday. So the day is starting from Monday is one, and then Tuesday is two, Wednesday is three, and so on. And I've got a particular date. I have sales of cakes of a particular bakery, pies, cookies, smoothies, coffee, and whether on that particular day some promotion was going on or not. And this is the total sales, which is of course the sum of all these sales right here from cakes to coffees. So this particular bakery is actually selling one, two, three, four, five items. And uh, that's how the data is collected or managed over a period of time. And if I see the entire data, then uh, in total there are uh, 1096, 95 entries in this particular data set. It's a huge data set of 1095 days of sales and uh, uh, so so what we need to do is uh, we need to understand how average or uh, arithmetic mean can help us making some kind of comparison and analysis for my convenience i have given names to the different field names so for cakes i have given something like cake so if i select the cake then entire uh, column gets selected I say cookies, then entire cookies get selected. So I've already named the fields. Uh, <clears throat> for your uh, convenience, what I'm going to do is I'll give you one more time demonstration that how exactly the columns can be named. So I select this entire column coffee. I go into the address, uh, you know, of the cell here, and I simply start giving it a name coffee and i hit enter and that's it a coffee is the name which is given to this entire column so i can call this particular column anywhere in the entire sheet let's see how arithmetic mean can be calculated for different items here cakes pies cookies smoothies and so i'll be using a very simple formula that means i'll be using average and then uh, i know i've already given the series name some name called cakes so I'll start typing it cakes. I can see it here, right here. And if you forget that what name you have given, you can use your function F3 key that shows you all the names. So I want to calculate the average of cakes. If the formula is so simple, you don't even have to close the bracket. Just hit enter and it gives you the average sales, right? Similarly, I want to know the average sales of pies. So I have given the name called pies, average sales of right cookies. So I've given it a name called cookies, average sales of uh, smoothies. So I've given it a name smoothie, average sales of a coffee. So I've just given it a name coffee and that's it. So I get the average sales very, very easily. And if I want to see the total average sales, I can also, you know, check it out. And if I write it, let's say, let's say total sales and i can simply write average of total sales right and that's it so what these figures are these are the average sales of 195 entries 195 days and if you want to compare it you can simply select this entire thing and use your uh, shortcut key uh, function alt f1 
or in some laptops it will work, uh, work like alt f1 and if i add uh, you know you want to add the data to the particular uh, so okay let me select the particular bar i don't know what is happening okay let me check cross check it once again so you can select this entire thing right here till the coffee let's say i'm not taking the total sales here and i'm going to go to insert and i'll put up a column chart right here select a bar which i don't know okay otherwise you can easily add the data labels right so you can go to chart design add chart element data labels and right outside and that's it so i don't know why my right click was not working but you can add the data labels another way if it is not working so uh you can see that uh, you know i can i can change it to the currency note here so i can simply change it to currency and you can see that uh, overall if i see the on an average the cookies actually has given you the highest sales of 540 Point four five dollars on an average each day so uh, cookies are giving you the highest revenue in terms of average sales right and on an average you manage to sell 12 90 point uh, three seven dollars sales each day that's a kind of interpretation uh, of average sales uh, so this is about average arithmetic mean which you want to calculate if you want to calculate let's say standard deviation and variance it is once again a very simple output stdev dot p means for population dot s for sample so since i'm collecting for all data so i'll call, call it uh, population and the calculation difference would be that when excel calculates it for population it divides the entire formula by n otherwise it is going to divide by n minus one uh, okay i want to calculate it for cakes so i calculate it for cakes and uh, same way if you want to calculate the variance and variance for population and uh, it is for cakes and when i say okay i'll just i'll just put the formula how the formula for uh, standard deviation of population and sample is different what does what do i mean by that particular thing how does the excel works okay there are certain things i don't know my uh, mouse pad is not working smooth let me check it out okay <clears throat> so if i am saying a uh, standard deviation for population which is the command uh, in excel is stdev dot p that's the command so in that particular case the formula goes something like that sqrt and uh, it is actually what x minus x bar and uh, okay and it's a square uh, okay it's a square divided by and right so that's that's how the formula for uh, standard deviation of uh, if you are calculating it for population then that's how this entire formula goes uh, and if you are using another command that means you are calculating let's say standard deviation for uh, other thing that means you are calculating it for sample the formula is going to go a little different right here so what will be the formula in that particular case so let me just copy it go down a bit paste it and if you are using the formula somewhere like uh, standard deviation dot so this formula is like uh, stash td ev dot s then it is going to divide it by n minus one which is called degrees of freedom so that's the difference between two calculations two formula calculations if i talk about uh, you know ms excel and um, how this uh, uh, the, there are two functions of standard deviation calculation which are actually coming up and that's how these uh, two formulas give you a different value and what do i mean here is <coughs> so you can check it once again stdev and you can see it's dot p or dot s so dot p is the formula on the top dot s is the formula at the bottom and if i want to do it for pies i can simply check in pies i can check it variance of population for so it's pretty simple right 
and uh, stdev.p for cookies and stdev dot uh, okay just forgot to put equal to stdev.p smoothies and uh, stdev for coffee right so this is this is this is this is exactly the calculation of standard deviation and um, you know all of you understand that uh, standard deviation square is also variance so you can simply square it or you can simply use a variance function here so <coughs> both are going to give you the same result so so it shows that it is the highest variation in cookies <coughs> sales that means their range is pretty high in the lowest and largest values are pretty much different the second highest variation is in the sales of coffee what these kind of variations actually tell you is when the variation is very high then inventory management becomes very difficult task if the variance is low then inventory is very easy so if the variance or standard deviation is almost zero in that case you know you can simply check it out that uh, um, if the variance is very low or let's say it is zero so in that case you will you're going to put the exact same quantity for each day that means the inventories um, are not going to change so uh, but if the variance is very very high then in that particular case it becomes very difficult to manage the inventory in a proper way because you don't know that what uh, what amount of sales i'm going to are going to take place today so the variance is higher variation leads to uh, difficulties in strategy making and uh, division so uh, that is about variance and standard deviation you can also represent this entire thing by using a particular graph or something so that is your call so that's that's uh, my input for uh, calculating it using a formula and uh, there are two, two charts which i have actually shown you one is for average and other is for standard deviation what i'm going to do right now is i'm to use a pivot table tool to calculate uh, this entire average thing so i'm going to go to put my cursor in the table go to insert and insert pivot table on new worksheet seems good to me now i'm going to show you a little quick analysis how pivot table can be really helpful so i'm going to put day week here and i'm going to put the sales of cakes in values and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to right click show values by average. So you can see that immediately I get the data in which I can make a lot of interpretation, right? So I can increase or decrease the decimal places here. And uh, these are the weekdays, right? These are the weekdays. And if I simply go to insert and I insert a pivot chart here, click OK and that gives me a lot of input that uh, OK if I talk about sales of uh, average sales of cakes then for me the best day is Saturday right it can sh it's showing me it is hundred and three point seven two dollars you change all this value to home and currency format that seems good so Saturday is the best day so what it is doing is if you look into the data set there are days like there are number of saturdays so there is this saturday there is this saturday and so on uh, there is this saturday here so in 100 1095 days so if you divide it by seven there will be roughly around uh, you can calculate that how many saturdays i'm saying 195 days and if i divide it by seven so roughly there are 156 saturdays so for all these saturdays the average sales is 103.72 dollars per saturday that's an average sales and uh, uh, same way for other weekdays so that's that's again you know you can just change it uh, is equal to average cake sales average of cakes so that that's a really wonderful uh, way to use pivot in order to understand that what does average actually do does i can add more things here i can add pies here and i can simply right click and show values uh, by as average and you can see that pies are also added and you can simply right click and add data labels and you can check this thing out that uh, right okay this is this is exactly giving me a very clean idea that what is happening to the sales of pies so blue is average sales of cakes and uh, this is average of pies I want to change 
this to uh, rather than average sales of cakes or something i would just change it to average sale with respect to weeks weekdays right right in fact weekdays so you can see that uh, this is uh, this these are the two things which i am comparing here you can further drag and drop cookies here and uh, you can see that it is actually showing me some of cookies so i need to just correct it uh, summarize values by average and you can see that cookies are actually in uh, 500s and the rest of the sales were in tens so that has created a kind of disruption in the data set so i might want to do cookies separately i don't want to check it up so that's how you can keep on adding the values and you can keep on calculating that what are the average sales the pivot has a lot of facilities rather so you can see if you go to show values by you can see how many uh, sales are there on sunday maximum minimum product and there are another options also you can see the standard division also if i want to calculate the standard division simply from here it tells me the standard division of cakes on different weekdays so if you see the highest variation is actually on saturdays once again and uh, again you can see that what are other options apart from standard deviation uh, you can calculate variance stab, uh, standard uh, uh, deviation for population uh, variance for population so all these things you can uh, click and do in one go by using a pivot table tool so okay let me do it one more time you can also you can also do two things simultaneously so what i'm trying to say is i'm dropping the pie to back i'm going to put the cakes in and i'll right click and show values by average so now i have a standard deviation as well as the average sales so i can use pivot table to find the arithmetic mean and do these kind of averages so and uh, find some kind of interpretation out of it let's see the geometric mean now that's that's an important slide here so you just need to understand that what formula of geometric mean i'm using here and other measures of uh, central tendency so this is the formula i'm using this formula is used whenever rate of change is mentioned in terms of percentage so i am explaining you how actually geometric mean is having an edge on arithmetic mean and if you see this particular data here let's go with respect to example let us suppose i made an investment for two years and these are the returns which are given for first year the return is 100 percent on my investment so it is represented by one and for second year and my return on my investment is 50 percent so these, these are the two investments which are given now uh, if i want to know what is the average investment per per year then i probably some of you would probably use average you know average return per year and i just select these two cells click ok and it says roughly there is a 75 percent return per year so let me use arithmetic mean to calculate that what i'm going to get at the end of two years right so i made an investment of rupees 100 now what will be my first year return so my first year return would simply my uh, initial investment of rupees 100 plus 75 percent on my initial investment so yeah, investment multiplied by the percentage 75 percent and that's my initial uh, return at the end of first year what will be my return of the at the end of second year it would be my uh, sum of amount which is available at the end of first year plus again a uh, 75 percent return on it right and that shows me that at the end of second year i must have 306.25 rupees in my hand right all this is currency so dollars let's say if i'm saying so it is 306.25 dollars in my hand now that is about using arithmetic mean but what exactly is happening that means i'm going to use no arithmetic mean or something no average return i'll just go with a very simple interest calculation so i invested rupees 100 for uh, i would say first year dollar 100 what will be my return at the end of first year it would be equal to my initial investment plus initial investment and first year's return that is 200 dollars and then at the end of second year is the money available at the end of first year plus 
this money times the second year's rate of return and uh, that means i'm going to get 300 rupees so simply if i'm not using any average return per annum using automatic mean i'm doing a very simple calculation of uh, probably simple interest calculation that means it is giving me 300 now what i'm going to do is so you can see that arithmetic mean is not providing me the right answer so this is the real scenario this is the real scenario this is mathematical or theoretical scenario and the theoretical result uh, is uh, yeah, you know it is pretty much away from the real result right here but i can get a right result so what i'll do is instead of using arithmetic mean i'm going to calculate a geometric mean so let me do what what exactly i'm using this particular formula uh, right here to calculate average return of the geometric mean so it is going to be 1 plus x1 value so x1 is right here right uh, multiplied by 1 plus second year's return i'm going to close the bracket and raise to the power 1 by 2 of course because there are two entries n is 2 minus 1 and that gives me that Average return is 0.7323 rather than 0.75. So let me use this uh, average return, uh, you know, uh, formula and uh, figure it out that what my investment uh, return on investment would be. So now instead of using arithmetic mean, I'm going to use geometric mean. So pretty simple calculation once again, absolutely same way. Let me redo the things for you. So I have invested rupees 100 in the beginning. So at the end of first year, my return would be 100 plus rupees 100 times the average return for the first year. And my next year return would be the money available at the end of first year plus uh, average geometric mean return on it. And that is 300. So if you see these two cells are absolutely giving you the same value. I mean, this is equal to uh, this is equal to oh, this. It should be true. It's true, right? So the concept here is whenever I'm dealing with rate of change, arithmetic mean provides me a wrong result. It doesn't give me the right kind of output. Whenever I'm dealing with rate of change and it's mentioned in terms of percentage, I should go ahead and use geometric mean for calculating the average annual return, average annual growth, average annual decay. So that's the difference between geometric mean and arithmetic mean. And that is uh, the idea behind this entire uh, you know, uh, concept of geometry. And we go to the next particular part, which is called median. So here I'll be covering median, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, percentile. Then I'll be covering two values of percentile, that is P20 and uh, p21 so let me change it in fact p21 instead of p21 what i would change it to p let's say 72 something of that sort so i'll be using p72 so let me right click it for itself subscript looks good right <clears throat> let's let's understand how to calculate uh, median i've been given with the marks of students of a particular class and uh, i'll for now delete this thing is zero zero so it doesn't get confused here so first i'll calculate the median value so i simply type in median select this entire column marks of students hit enter 72 that means what it means that half of the students of this data which contains how many entries 206 so first is the column heading so there are 205 so half of the students are scoring above 72 marks and half of the students are below scoring below 72 marks you want to verify it let me verify it median verification so let me verify it very very quickly so i'll put up a formula you can also learn an if formula here so i will say if this particular cell right here is less than uh, my 72 which i'll freeze of course function f4 then write one and if right this particular cell right here is equal to my this cell and i'll freeze it then write one else uh, then write zero else write two right 
so this is the logical test which i am running that means if my uh, value in the left cell is equal to median then write 0 if it is greater than median then write 2 if it is less than median then write 1 okay and uh, working correct it is greater than 72 and it is writing 2 i shoot it down and uh, i am verifying whether half of the values are above median or half are below, uh, below median so i'll put it somewhere here so below median so below median i have written 1 equal to median i have written 0 and above median I have written 2. So let me check it. So how do I check or cross verify? Count of this range. And I want to count 1 in it. 1, 0, 2 values are below median is equal to count of. And in this particular cell, I want to count 0. There is exactly one value which is equal to 72 and sitting as median and then i'm going to use otherwise you can easily see that uh, you know there will be half of the values which are above 102 so you can see that 72 is cutting all 205 entries exactly into two halves and 72 is sitting right here at the center let me calculate first quartile now First quartile means it is going to chop the bottom 25% of the data is equal to quartile. So I will be simply typing the formula quartile. So it is right here. The yellow triangle said that this is how this is how this formula was lined up in 2007 in this array marks of the students. And I want to calculate first quartile. So I'll write first one. Hit enter. 56 is the value. And that simply shows that bottom 25 percent students are scoring below 56 and how many uh, and what is the number of those students so uh, it will be in total i have 205 students and 25 percent of them so into 25 percent so that's it so roughly at around 51 52 students are scoring below 56 it will be equal to median and you can simply type in quartile function so quartile and uh, of marks of students and i want to calculate second quartile equal to median and i think now you can calculate the quartile very very easily so it will be quartile and uh, of marks of students and i want to calculate a third quartile let us see percentile so for p20 if i'm calculating a 20th percentile i just need to put 0.2 instead of 20 and if i am using let's say 72 percentile then i'll be putting 0.72 so how do i type percentile right here is the function and a marks of students here and i want to calculate 20th percentile so 0 0.20 or 0.2 whatever you want to write so 51.8 so bottom 25 percent students are scoring below these marks and rest 80% students are scoring above these marks. And same way I can go to percentile. Use the marks of students and I can simply type 0.72. Close the bracket and you can see that 83 are the marks below which, you know, 72% of the students are there and above which actually 28% students are there. If you want to calculate mode, you understand what does the mode mean. So, how many? Like, if if I calculate mode, so 73 is the most repeated value. And uh, skewness again. So you can simply type skewness of population marks of students hit enter. So negatively skewed. So what does skewness means? This skewness simply means that larger number of values are above mean and negative skewness means what so just check this particular chart right here i am just going to put it a little small check this so before that i will calculate the average also so average of uh, marks of students click okay okay let me reduce the decimal points here 
so if you see for negatively skewed data you can see here right hand side of chart mean is lowest median is at the center mode is higher so you can see that mean is lowest median is at the center 72 and mode is the highest so it is negatively skewed data it also means that larger number of people are actually scoring above mean larger number of people are scoring above mean so that means out of 205 students more than half of the students are scoring above mean value above average value so that's 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 the understanding of this and you can cross verify it you can use an if function that if that value on the def left is above mean than right one as zero and then you can count one so try it out and if you don't find find a difficulty you can ask me right there so that's how the descriptive stats can be done and understanding can be developed we can do it in one single go also we so far i have taught you how to do these things manually so you can simply uh, go to data go to data analysis right here and in this data analysis you just check descriptive statistics clicks okay task for input range so i'm selecting this entire thing here so ask for, for input range marks of the students I've selected this entire thing right here and uh, then i said labels in first row yes they are there click on output range and uh, let's see i want to put this output somewhere here okay every set is good i click on summary statistics click okay and that's it so whatever uh, whatever manual calculations have done so you can see that <clears throat> everything gets calculated here uh, you have average you have standard error so you know how what is the standard error right um, and uh, so and then you have uh, median then you have mode you have standard deviation you have sample variance and what is what is standard error this is actually standard deviation divided by um, i think square root n so sqrt and the count yes so that is it that's the formula for a standard error you must remember your stats class so it is simply that mean it calculates mode it calculates the standard deviation variance which is actually standard deviation square so you can see that it is absolutely the same and skewness yes uh 0 0.12 it is coming 0 0.11 so if i reduce the decimal places it would be absolutely same so uh and then just reduce the decimal places so you can see it's 0 0.12 right kurtosis shows you the flatness of the curve and the range maximum minimum sum of the marks count to 0, 05 and what is the mean value mean is actually sum right here divided by count right that's it so you can see that in sing single stroke we can uh, get all the descriptive statistics and we can also do the things manually thank you very much thank you